Budget challenges, enrollment, keeping tuition affordable. We'll talk with two private college and university presidents about how they're tackling those challenges and more on this edition of Iowa Press. Funding for Iowa Press was provided by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation. The Associated General Contractors of Iowa, the public's partner in building Iowa's highway, bridge, and municipal utility infrastructure. Elite Casino Resorts is rooted in Iowa. Elite was founded 30 years ago in Dubuque and owned by 1,200 Iowans from more than 45 counties. With resorts in Riverside, Davenport, and Larchwood, Iowa, Elite is committed to the communities we serve. Across Iowa, hundreds of neighborhood banks strive to serve their communities, provide jobs, and help local businesses. Iowa banks are proud to back the life you build. Learn more at iowabankers.com. For decades, Iowa Press has brought you political leaders and newsmakers from across Iowa and beyond, celebrating 50 years of broadcast excellence on statewide Iowa PBS. This is the Friday, October 6th edition of Iowa Press. Here is Clay Masters. Earlier this year, Iowa Wesleyan University in Mount Pleasant, one of the oldest universities in the state, shut its doors for good. As higher education evolves, small private institutions are working hard to remain strong and viable. Our guests this week lead two liberal arts schools doing just that. Patricia Draves is the president of Graceland University in Lamoni. She's in her seventh year leading that university. And Jay Byers is just a few months into the job as president of his alma mater, Simpson College in Indianola. Thanks to both of you for being on Iowa Press today. Thanks for having us. Thanks, we appreciate it very much. Across the table, Caleb McCullough, the Des Moines Bureau Chief for Lee Enterprises. It has newspapers in the Quad Cities, Waterloo, Sioux City, just to name a few. And Aaron Murphy is Des Moines Bureau Chief for the Gazette in Cedar Rapids. So we wanted to talk about tuition costs, which is obviously something that a lot of families and students uh, talk about and, and managing the affordability of those. And each of your schools is, uh, has implemented some new and interesting programs that we wanted to give you both a chance to talk about. So Patricia, we'll start with you at Graceland. Graceland has cut its base tuition in half. Tell us a little bit more about that, why you, you did that and, and how you were able to make that work. Yeah, just a couple of weeks ago, we announced a big transformation in our approach to tuition. So we cut, you know, we um, transformed the tuition for sticker price or published price from $32,500 to $19,950. And we, um, you know, one of the incentives for that was um, just about opening access to higher education and to private higher education and the Graceland education for the um, for all students. We found that like 70 percent of students weren't even looking at us based on that mm -hmm. sticker price. And then a big part of it is also just simplifying the process. So we committed to simplifying the financial aid process because so many families don't understand with scholarships and federal aid and uh, and just a simple way to look that and a way to highlight our new transformational leadership program, which I hope we get to talk about later on. And, 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 and Jay Byers, I, I believe this predated your, your tenure, but uh, uh, Simpson College implemented a, a program that offers full tuition scholarships to families that are under $100,000 of, of family income level. Is that right? Uh, yeah, correct. So um, we... At Simpson College, affordability and accessibility is really important for us. Uh, we still have about, you know, um, about a third of our students are first generation college students and about 40% are Pell eligible. So we're very much a college of social mobility. And so for multiple years now, we've had what's called the Simpson Promise, which um, is, and, and the, the recent announcement is building on that. So actually that was, um, has been implemented since I started. It was, um, and it's called, uh, we're, um, all, the overall uh, program is called All In For Iowa, and so there is the $100,000 promise, and basically any family with, um, with uh, income of $100,000 or less, um, and you meet the income requirements, and you're from Iowa, and you live on campus, um, your first, uh, it's tuition free. So basically paying cost of room and board, and then you'd qualify, um, most of those students would qualify for Iowa tuition grant and, and also the Pell Grant. Um, we also, um, 
also uh, uh, implemented what we're calling the, the, um, the, the 99 county scholarship as well too. So we're offering one um, tuition scholarship to at least one student in all 99 counties um, and that is regardless of uh, uh, income requirements. And so we're super excited about that, that dual program. And how important is it, to, if each of you could just take a quick crack at this, to, to, to have something like this to get students to look at your colleges? Because as you said, you know, we know, and this isn't unique to private colleges either, public universities are facing the same thing, that um, tuition costs have skyrocketed in recent years, so how important is it to have something like this to draw it, students to your college, Jay? Well, I think it's really important. Um, and uh, again, we're in a great trend right now. There's a lot of momentum at Simpson right now. In fact, our numbers are way up this year. We had, um, with first year students, we were up 14% uh, uh, year over year. And then if you put in our transfers, we we're up 11%. It was our largest class in five years. Um, so you know, some of the trends you're hearing nationally, um, that, that that's not what's happening at Simpson College. Now, both of these um, measures that, that your schools took are ways to effectively decrease your tuition prices and attract more students. Um, but students and, and parents alike are kind of uh, data shows rethinking the value of a four-year degree and whether it's worth that investment. So is it, is it worth the investment for a private school in, uh, in Iowa? And you know, what can private colleges do to signal that they are worth uh, students' time? Pat? Yeah, I mean, the value of a four-year degree has never been stronger. There's data on the national level, the Iowa level, to, to support that. I mean, things like, uh, how much income you know if you look at a high school student that has graduated from high school in Iowa versus a bachelor's degree it's about twice the earnings you know if you look at the health of that individual the happiness of that individual between high school and in college much higher for the college graduates never mind you know for the state of Iowa the economic impact you know, college graduates versus some high school or some other high schools, you know, use most, you know, are living a third in poverty, are using, you know, some of the social programs, whether it's Medicare, at, at much higher rates, 25% higher than college graduates, as well as, um, you know, other economic impacts um, as well. And that's just here in Iowa. So the value, um, you know, of placing, you know, our resources into supporting education are seen just in the economic impact because if we're not paying from there, we're gonna be paying for them in just different social programs, never mind bringing innovation to the state. I, I'd just like to add to that too. Again, you know, the, the, the economic data is very clear in terms of uh, lifelong earnings. Um, and, and by the way, that gap is not getting smaller, it's getting bigger, whether you have a BA or don't have a BA. But there's a lot, there's a lot more to it than just that. And, and, and how do we sell this to you know, parents and students? Because ultimately, when students are coming here, and, and for parents too, they want to make sure that, they're, that, they're, um, that their student has a, a good job and a good career. And so I think a lot of what happens in places like Simpson and Graceland and other small colleges across our state are what are those skills that they're learning that are beyond just the classroom? And so some people call those soft skills. I don't think there's anything soft about them. I call them power skills. So it's things like leadership and teamwork, collaboration, communication, problem solving, adaptability. And that is something that um, uh, small colleges are really great at. And by the way, those skills, it's not just what you graduate with with a degree. It's what are those skills that are going to transcend lots of different jobs, lots of careers, because because you know our current students are going to have 9, 10, 11, 12 different jobs, different yeah. careers. And by the way, a lot of those careers don't even exist yet with, with the evolution of you know, all the technology that's happening faster and faster every day. So these skills that we're teaching them, um, when they graduate, they're going to be able to transcend all of that and continue to be successful. And uh, one other thing I just want to sort of mention on that front too is Gallup has done a lot of research um, and it's called the, the big six. So these big six factors, and, and Pat mentioned some of these as well too, but you know things like um, a professor made me excited to learn. A professor cared about me as an individual. Um, I had a mentor um, that helped me reach my goals. Um, I'm working on a long-term project. I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm actively engaged in extracurricular activities. I had an inter internship that was related to classroom uh, work. And so um, at Simpson, about 86% of our students um, t uh, will score at three or higher than that. That's almost 
three times the national average. And, and, and what that shows is some of the things that Pat mentioned too, um, overall lifelong well, well-being, happiness and careers. And so that's something we do really, really well at. And just one more thing to add to that is the long tail of COVID now with, with the, the, the concerns um, that we're seeing with so many of our students, not only at our institutions, but every institution across this country with the rise in mental health issues and then and, and, and just um, the remediation that's needed uh, for certain academics, again, because of the challenges that, that our current students face. Small schools are really good at that with that personal care. And on top of that, when you're in small towns, like a lot of us are, you are embraced, right? So I think we're exactly what today's college students need. At the same time, so you both get to be cheerleaders for your schools, for the towns in which both of your institutions are in. At the outset of this conversation, uh, I talked about Wesleyan closing its doors in Mount Pleasant. I mean, this is a, a situation that's unique to that school, but it, it faces universities across this state, and there are a lot of private institutions across the state mm -hmm. face new realities and concerns. How much of a concern is keeping your doors open for, for both of you? Pat, we'll start with you. I mean, for I think every college president, whether you're at a state school or whether a private institution in the Midwest, in, in a rural state, that is a concern, right? There's lots of risk factors out there for colleges and universities, um, and, and we have some of them, right, um, as here in Iowa. So, so yes, I would not be responsible if I was doing my job if I wasn't concerned about each and every one of those. But innovation, meeting students where they're at and addressing their needs and supporting them is part of the reason we're for su success. So, so some of the things like at Graceland that we've done in terms of, um, you know, package that the, what we call the Graceland experience of, of leadership. We've produced leaders for lots of times and, you know, announced, a, you know, a year ago, a transformational leadership major that does those, I call them durable skills, Jay, mm -hmm. right? Those hard skills you know, along with an area of expertise to try to get um, or to have students equipped for all those changing jobs is an important part of it. But also making sure <coughs> that we are meeting what are some of the market demands for jobs out there. So, you know, changing what the academic portfolio is. And that means making hard decisions about what we're not gonna do and eliminating majors, but also what we're gonna do and what we're gonna invest in. So we've seen like our business program over the last year triple in terms of students that are interested. The digital content you know, creation major versus some other majors that we had in the past to address some changing needs. I think that's a really important part is addressing some of the market need for jobs as well as where students' interests are. Jay Byers, do you feel like you're in fiercer competition these days with other private colleges within the within the state? Just be as we see out migration of young people. I mean, and you've seen some colleges uh, like in Mount Pleasant close its doors. Do you feel more competitive with the, the small liberal arts colleges in Iowa? I think our biggest challenge actually is that percentage of students who are choosing not to go to college right now. I think if we all do a better job with some of the messaging we've been talking about today, there's plenty of students for all of us to be successful. Um, and whether or not the, those are students that are within Iowa, um, across the country, and internationally. And so I think that, uh, again, I think that's the biggest challenge that we're all sort of facing in terms of that percentage of students um, who don't think they need to go to college anymore. And how, how, how can we sh continue to show them and their and their families that 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 how that that value is still really really important. Um, so ultimately, I think if we're successful with that, that um, there's pathways to success with all of us. But I do agree yeah. with with Pat too that um, it is about innovation. It's about looking forward. How do you continue to evolve? Because what worked in the past um, is not going to you know you you got to move with the times, right? You got you know in a place like Grace and a place like Simpson, you got to honor the past, but you got to redefine the future. And, um, and, and, and quite frankly, that's every industry. And, and so higher education's got to be that way too. And, did you, and correct me if I'm wrong earlier, you said enrollment, Jay, at Simpson has been bucking trends. Enrollment has been increasing, is that right? Correct. Yeah, and at Graceland, we're at, and, I mean, our incoming class was our eight year high. So, so what do you attribute to things. that too, Pat? So some is, um, you know, and we know that is response to some of the new programs that we have introduced that students are coming from that. And also this transformational leadership. They know they need the career readiness skills in order to move into the workforce. And that major is allowing them to do that. And some of it is just a lot of hard work, right? And doing it a little more effectively. But 
to jump on your part, the piece that keeps me up at night is the number of high school graduates in Iowa that are choosing not to attend college is much um, higher than our than our region. You know, seven percent lower than it was. You know, about eight years ago. And so just moving directly into the workforce and not attending college. And what does that mean in terms of the economic impact and the innovation for the state? Who's going to start those new businesses? Is some, that is something I keep up. And I would say five years ago, I didn't think I was going to have to worry about like people, high school kids not hmm. choosing not to go to college. But some of that is around the, the misperception about the return on investment in a college degree, which is clear. So we talk politics a lot here on Iowa Press, um, but you know, so much attention at the State House is put on public universities, and we don't hear as much about private universities um, at that level. So, what uh, public policy changes would you all like to see that would help uh, address some of the challenges you see at your um, schools, Jay? Well, I, I think by far and away our um, most important issue for small colleges is the Iowa Tuition Grant, and, and it's it's uh, it's an amazing program. So. Um, I, from, from Simpson's perspective and from the industry, you know, we're just very thankful to the governor and the legislators um, for their ongoing support of the Iowa tuition grant. There's, there's other issues that we're following, but that's our biggest issue by far. Yeah, and I could not agree with you more. I mean, one of the things that Iowa's done well under the leadership of the governor and the legislator is support students to go to different types of universities, whether it's three regions, 15 community colleges, or 32 you know, private colleges. But the Iowa tuition grant keeps a lot of Iowans in Iowa. So that's the number one um, issue. There's a lot of talk this year about the change in the Federal Financial Aid um, Simplification Act on the federal level and what that means for students. You know, We're delaying um, the announcement of, of that um, or availability of the FAFSA, which many of you know, until December, and so what's the impact? But every college in the you know nation is dealing with that delay, so we'll we'll at least all go through it together. But helping make that a simpler process for families, I think, is going to be a good one. But something that we have, and I would say I was led the, the there were some very concerning things in that Simplification Act that would impact small businesses, but more importantly, rural and ag families and how they were going to kind of count farms in terms of assets. All the Iowa college presidents got together to, to kind of go into Washington, had days where we met with legislators to, to make them aware of that issue and there were some changes as a result of that, which was great. Talking about federal policy, back in June, the Supreme Court uh, struck down affirmative actions when it came to admissions. Mm -hmm. Either of you seen much of an impact on your campuses? Uh, Jay, we'll start with you. Sure. Uh, it had uh, basically no impact okay. on Simpson College, um, but I think some of the, the uh, if, 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 if uh, we look at um, the demographics, our changing demographics, I think some people would be surprised at how diverse a place like Simpson College is. So the last two years, um, you know, roughly 25% you know, of our classes have been racially diverse. And, um, you know, we have a um, test optional um, admissions um, and, you know, it's based off of GPAs and we recruit um, in urban areas and suburban areas, um, rural areas, and, you know, everybody who meets the, those um, uh, admissions requirements, uh, they have the opportunity to become a Simpson at, student, at Simpson College. Pat, how would you come at that question? Yeah, I would answer the same thing. We'd, race is not used, um, ethnicity as an admissions requirement, so it really hasn't had an impact. Um, and you know, for us, we're even more diverse than Simpson. You know, we're about 38, 39 percent um, with different backgrounds. So you know, in terms of underrepresented groups, but it's a part. It's a really um, strong enrollment piece for us because. Students get to live in rural Iowa with a pretty diverse group from from lots of different cultural backgrounds. So it's, it's one of the things that students really like about Graceland. Yeah, so private colleges often try to emphasize one or a few areas that they try to excel in to stand out among the crowd. Um, what is what is that for you all? Um, Pat, I know you said you had a major that you wanted to talk about. Is that part of that, or what, what are you looking yeah, at? Yeah, I mean, the transformational leadership major is a major that's offered to every student at Graceland. So every student will get two majors, one in the area of expertise, and then a transformational leadership, which captures 
you know, leadership development over four years, but also, um, you know, some of those durable skills, especially for the digital economy. So a digital citizenship class and fluency, you know, as well as um, a social responsibility class and, you know, just health and wellness um, type of class. So that's, that's an added piece, but, um, you know, for us, we have lots of diverse programs, but our business program and our STEM fields, you know, science, technology, um, and, you know, and math, we don't have engineering, are, are big parts of the, the Graceland um, experience for our students in our biggest majors. Jeff? Yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of uh, um, areas of strength. Um, and so again, we've got a lot of business majors, a lot of, you know, science majors, um, uh, education, political science, uh, uh, lots of others as well too. So we're we have got a lot of strengths, and and I think you know a, a lot with our core curriculum, um, working on you know in terms of a lot of those other leadership development um, mm. um, and and career preparation um, that that Pat had mentioned as well too. Similar things at Simpson. So um, we've got a lot of, uh, of of centers of excellence. How much do sports and extracurriculars play into that and into drawing students to campus? J, J, yeah, it's, it's huge. Um, you know, we have um, about 60% of our students who are student athletes. Um, we just recently um, launched four new sports um, within the last uh, couple of years. So men's and women's gymnastics, women's wrestling, and men's volleyball. Um, and uh, um, we also have, you know, a really active um, uh, eSports program that's nat competing at the national level. Um, but I think other activities as well too. So for example, our speech and debate um, program is very, very strong at Simpson. We were, we've been national champs six out of the last seven years and that's going against you know, the largest schools in the, in the country. Um, and so there's, there's, there's a lot of those uh, opportunities. And again, when you go back to that, so those big, big six factors I mentioned with Gallup, um, you know, a huge percentage of our students are actively engaged in, in, in multiple um, um, co-curricular activities. Is it similar at Graceland, Pep? Yeah, I mean, we have 23 sports at Graceland. <coughs> About 75% of our students are student athletes. And, but one of the things at Graceland is you can do a lot. So we have a lot of student athletes that are also members of the choir and the band or um, those communication groups that, that Jay mentioned, but an important part of their overall experience. And we very much, and I think Jay will agree, I mean, it's part, everything is part of a student's education. So whether it's uh, how they live in the residence halls is part of their educational experience, of course, their classroom and academics, but their, their co and extracurricular are an important part of their leadership. You know, whether it's leadership development, teamwork skills, working with diverse others, um, that's an important part. And our coaches and, and arts directors are an important part of that. So during the COVID pandemic, we saw the explosion of online learning, lots of uh, ways for people to get their education by taking classes online, whatnot. How does that square into uh, your uh, institutions, especially when what I'm hearing from both of you is so much the on-campus kind of uh, experience that these students have. Jay, we'll start with you. Sure. Well, um, some people might not know this, but we've ha had a West Des Moines campus for many, many years. And uh, in fact, I used to be an adjunct professor a number of years ago for Simpson and teaching out of our West Des Moines campus. Um, and, and so a lot of those programs are now online as well, too. So, I mean, that's been a, an important part of, of our offering. So um, we have a lot of, uh, of adult learners um, who are part of that, and, and we'll continue to expand that in addition to what we're um, offering on campus as well. So I think it's important to have that diversity, and it's been a big part of our strengths, and we're going to really lean into that in the future, too. Online learning, how does it fit into Graceland? Yeah, I, it has been a long part of our history. So we have an Iowa campus that is traditional residential, that online, you know, that in-person experience that students are, you know, craving, especially out of high school. But we have, we actually are the school that offered the first distance education master's in nursing program that's offered out of our Kansas City campus as well. And so we have several master's programs, data science, nutrition, human performance, um, and launching a doctorate in physical therapy program, you know, as well under Kansas City. And then Graceland has a, an interesting um, organization that we, um, educate and train about a million people in business soft skills at our uh, 
organization called SkillPath that is out of Mission, Kansas, and so a different part of the, the organization. So we've got three parts. You know, obviously we're focusing on Iowa today. Aaron, you, you get the final question. Yeah, we just yeah. have about a minute left, yeah, and, yeah. and as we mentioned before, you two, part of the reason you're here is to advocate for each yeah, of your yeah. schools. So, so maybe just as we go, 30 seconds each, one more thing you want viewers to know or prospective students maybe to know about your, your school. Uh, Jay, we'll start with you in Simpson College. Yeah, well, uh, our, our mission is to transform uh, students to transform the world, right? And uh, that's what we do. And as I think if you look at today's you know, world of political divisiveness, um, we, I think we do a really excellent job of preparing our students to be successful in, in a very challenging world right now. And, and that's really what we focus on. And I think those are the types of leaders um, that our state really needs moving forward in terms of how we're going to continue to navigate the, the tough political waters and, and, and bring our state together, urban, rural, um, suburban, and I think, you know, being in Indianola, we're in the perfect place to do that. I think we've done that really well for a long time, and, and I think that that's just an important mission for us and, and for the entire state. And Pat. Yeah, and um, Graceland University has a long heritage since 1895 of producing leaders. We're doing that in a new and different way this um, year with the transformational leadership and then with our tuition transformation announcement just a couple of weeks ago, trying to make sure that everyone knows a Graceland education is open um, and available to them if they explore that option. And, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, as a proud Iowan, um, you know, as of six years ago, and uh, an American, I mean, just the way that Iowa colleges work together um, is amazing. It's not like any other state that I've seen. And so how do we get students to Iowa? So it's thank you for allowing us, Jay and I, yep. to be on the show and share with you. We thank you it. both for being here on Iowa Press. Yep. Happy to be here anytime. Thank you so much. If you missed any of this show or want to watch a previous show, you can find all Iowa Press episodes online at iowapbs.org. For everyone here at Iowa PBS, I'm Clay Masters. Thanks for joining us today. Funding for Iowa Press was provided by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation the Associated General Contractors of Iowa, the public's partner in building Iowa's highway, bridge, and municipal utility infrastructure. Elite Casino Resorts is rooted in Iowa. Elite's 1,600 employees are our company's greatest asset. A family-run business, Elite supports volunteerism, encourages promotions from within, and shares profits with our employees. Across Iowa, Hundreds of neighborhood banks strive to serve their communities, provide jobs, and help local businesses. Iowa banks are proud to back the life you build. Learn more at iowabankers.com.